This piece is called When the Pencil Was Mightier Than the Sword. I was always fascinated by the expression, the pen is mightier than the sword. My interpretation was that the sword was a way of being victorious by using force. However, the pen was a subtle way of achieving the same goal, but without resistance. My variation was to literally use a pencil to end up being on top of the situation. In the late 1970s, I started working as a junior accountant in a government bureaucracy. My boss, Al Mazellis, was also a fellow veteran. I served in the Army in Vietnam. He was a Marine in World War II. Al's advice of, you know, Nick, you know more than you think you know, came in handy whenever I had to solve a, a workplace issue as I adjusted to this new work environment. We were the hub of the finance department. We were responsible for all corporate payments with the exception of payroll and all accounts receivable. We generated the monthly financial statements that were used by upper management, sent to state and city officials, and annually we worked with an outside CPA firm such as Price Waterhouse to have our annual statement certified. We also worked on many special products, uh, projects as any time requested by upper management. Al trained me to see work not as addressing problems, but as solving puzzles that somehow always had an answer. Al hated the many meetings that he had to attend, whether in his office or somebody else's. He also wasn't too happy about the uh, push by management to start using desktop computers. That was not the way he rolled. I was fascinated by his master of the hand-posted spreadsheets that he used to complete the assets and depreciation records for the corporation. They looked very complicated. Suddenly, a curveball was thrown to our section. When one morning I came to work and was told that Al had suffered a heart attack. A lot of his duties fell on my shoulders. You know, it wasn't much of a surprise that management that was always buzzing around his office shied away. Accounting deadlines don't accept any excuses. I had to tackle the big job of assets and depreciation with their 30 column work papers. I started to work in Al's office. I had to smile when inside his desk, I found all his pencils were sharpened and facing the same direction, ready to be used. I stayed after hours so I could quietly work on the biggest puzzle of my career. Again, to Al's credit, his, his, his work may have been voluminous, but he was so meticulous that I was able to pick up his clear accounting trail. Al was right. Somehow I did know more than I thought I knew. Al retired after coming back briefly. I was promoted. Eventually, with the help of information technology personnel, assets and depreciation incorporated Microsoft software to work its magic. Spreadsheets were, were generated at the push of a button. However, nothing can replace the satisfaction 
a completing a complicated task using skills, patience, and a sharpened number two pencil. Thank you, Al.